Potentially, you may have heard that Christian Horner and Red Bull have been having a little bit of a tense situation of late. And in many ways, it feels like it's just getting started. The situation, though, has so many facets and rumors that it is very hard to keep track of what's actually going on, what the politics are behind it, what the actual investigation was about, and so on let alone to try and then extrapolate what kind of effect this will have on Red Bull Racing in the long term. So I wanted to try and unpack the situation in the best way possible, give you all of the reports, and try and figure out the potential outcome of the situation. He is being investigated at the moment for allegations of inappropriate behaviour. Yesterday talking. was interesting. We spoke to Max Verstappen, who obviously sided with his dad. I'm uh, fine. It's business as normal. I'm focused on the season ahead. Now and, reports uh, that the woman who initially made those complaints of inappropriate behaviour against Christian Horner, that she has been suspended. Now, we don't know that uh, for sure. In order to run through the sequence of events before getting onto the politics, I'm going to add a little icon up the top here, which is essentially going to tell you whether this item has been confirmed, which will mean by the FIA, F1, or Red Bull themselves, whether it has been a rumor, which will mean essentially a reputable source has quoted it, or someone that I think is reliable has spoke to me or someone else about it, and then speculation, where in reality I haven't heard it from anything I would consider concrete, but it's out in the ether and it was worth mentioning. There's not going to be many of those. So let's go through what we know and what we've heard so far and the timeline of events here. And then on top of that, go into the politics underlying this whole situation and the potential outcomes it could have, which could be devastating for Red Bull Racing. And this all started with you subscribing. It all kicked off on February 5th of 2024, this year, when we found out that Red Bull had launched an investigation into Christian Horner the team principal of Red Bull Racing. And this, as you can see, is a fact because it was put out in a statement. And we also found out that this investigation would be headed up by an independent third party, a independent barrister in London who would look over the whole situation to remove any bias. And the initial reporting around this was that it was either something to do with sexual harassment or aggressive management style. Basically, either something that is sexual in nature or manipulative or coercive in nature in the workplace. And it has been widely reported by the media that this was in fact a sexual harassment case that also spilled into some coercive, aggressive management behavior within the organization. It should be noted, though, that Red Bull, the FIA or F1 never actually confirmed this. And to this point, we still don't know 100% that that is the case. It is widely reported by a lot of credible sources, but it hasn't been confirmed. And it's just important to note that so we get the full story here for no other reason than to make sure the facts are the facts. And then on February 9th, we know that Horner went to London to meet with the investigator and go through all of this and give his side of the argument. And that went on for around eight hours. And then we got nothing but rumor and, and essentially just waiting and a couple of awkward interviews between February 18th and 19th, basically around the launch of Red Bull, the first time that any media got to meet personally with Christian Horner. And Red Bull, as well as Christian Horner, both essentially said that they can't comment on an ongoing investigation and that they would have to wait for the outcome. This led to F1 and the FIA also putting out their own statements as well, acknowledging the situation but refusing to comment on it until there was some sort of outcome. And this all went on through testing with Horner being asked again and again and still was unable to give any sort of indication as to what was going on. And then on February 28th, we got the confirmation from Red Bull GmbH, again, the parent company of Red Bull, that the Horner allegations had been dismissed, that he had essentially been cleared of wrongdoing in terms of the investigation. Now, I make that distinction not to put any bias on this at all, but basically just to say that is an important distinction this was dismissed, he was cleared of any wrongdoing in terms of the investigation, which means that essentially whatever happened could be completely valid and true, 
But in terms of a legal argument, he did nothing wrong in terms of the allegations brought against him. And important to note as well that up until this point, and to be honest, up until right now, there is still no clarification around what the actual allegations were. I'll put Red Bull's statement after the case was dismissed up on screen right now. But while it has been widely reported that this is around a female member of staff and that these are sexual harassment allegations, there actually hasn't been any confirmation of that from Red Bull or the parties involved. So again, I just importantly note that because we want to stick with facts here, for all we know, Christian Horner could have been accused of something completely different and still can't mention it. The reporting is from credible sources, so we could probably take it on relatively face value. But again, sticking to the facts, it was never actually confirmed what this was all about. And this is when things went a bit bonkers. So the day after these allegations were dropped on February 28th, there was a leak sent to a wide variety of people, namely the head of F1, the head of FIA, all of the team principals of the other teams, all of the 150 journalists that normally cover this sort of thing. I think it was 150, don't quote me on the number, and Jos Verstappen, which was an odd one to add to the list. And we also don't know if the contents of that leak are what they appear to be. In that leak were a variety of WhatsApp messages and photos. Now, it has been widely reported that these photos and leaks and WhatsApp messages are accurate. But again, it hasn't been confirmed. My opinion on this after seeing them is that I can't comment on whether the actual contents are accurate. It seems like most of the media has leaned towards that direction, which would give me some confidence of their accuracy. However, it does seem like these are transcripts, basically copies of the messages fed into some sort of software that creates WhatsApp messages or creates WhatsApp screenshots just because it looks a bit off um, in terms of the way they're displayed and the way the upper casing, lower casing and so on. Nerdy stuff. But it does seem like the reporting has moved towards those being accurate. One of the speculations, though, was that there were certain kinds of pics in there. I probably don't need to say what kinds you think, but I will just point out that I, from what I've seen anyway, am not convinced that there is anything like that in there because there is one image that circulated and well i'll just say i don't think it's that body part because well those body parts don't normally have fingernails and then on february 29th the same day horner did reiterate that he wouldn't comment on leaks and he denied any of these allegations and at the start of march over the coming days essentially we had the fia and f1 meet with horner directly and then essentially not comment on it after that so it's hard to really know the validity of those messages. Again, the reporting is leaning towards them being accurate, but the fact that F1 and the FIA didn't really make a statement after Horner met with them means that either there is some doubts around the validity or the source of these messages is a big problem. And that's why F1 and the FIA basically stood out of it and just called for transparency. And essentially that is where talk around the investigation stopped and we get into a political play. So I'm gonna give you the overview of the political play, but let me just finish off with how we got to knowing this information and why we had to start digging. So on March 3rd, Jos Verstappen started to make comments publicly around Christian Horner's leadership and started to go down the path of essentially saying Horner's leadership after all of this was untenable. And this caused a lot of speculation around Max Verstappen leaving the team. Interestingly then, one of the rumors that I heard and that started going around is that Jos Verstappen was in a relationship or is in a relationship of some kind with Horner's accuser, which turned this whole thing into an absolute telenovela in the background. Now again, none of that's been confirmed. I've heard it from some credible sources, but again, confirming what type of relationship that is, if it exists at all, uh, is the type of stuff that reporters don't generally do unless they work for the Daily Mail. And then we had the wild speculation that Verstappen would go to Mercedes after we saw Jos talking to Toto. The two of them have been talking for a long time, but of course, when there's photos, while this is going on, it makes it 
a bigger speculation. But then there was more and more of these rumors, and that's when things came to a head. Because Helmut Marko essentially went on the record saying that he thinks he's going to be suspended and talked about this in the press, uh, basically alleging that this was linked to the whole Horner situation and that he was being investigated for some sort of leaked material. Again, we don't know whether the leak has anything to do with the Christian Horner leak, but this blew the whole thing wide open. And this was the first time that Verstappen himself, Max Young Verstappen, came out and essentially said that it would be a huge issue if Helmut Marko were to go, adding to the fire, fumes, and speculation around him leaving for another team. Oliver Minslaff, the CEO of Red Bull GmbH, again the parent company, came to the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix on the Saturday, met with Helmut Marko, and Helmut Marko confirmed to the press after that that essentially he would be staying at Red Bull. Now, we don't know, and the rumor around this, whether or not Oliver Minslav actually met with Helmut Marko to discuss this specific situation around leaks and so on. We don't know that for a fact. We do know that it was told to us by Helmut Marko, but Again, Oliver Minslav, Red Bull, FIA, F1 didn't actually confirm this. So if we'll have to take Helmut Marko on his word for that one. And then the final piece of all of this before we get into the politics is that according to a variety of sources, the female accuser of Horner within Red Bull has been suspended with pay and is under investigation at the moment around dishonesty with regards to the investigation. Red Bull have simply denied the comment on this, so we don't know if that's factual or not. So that is essentially everything that happened between rumor and speculation. Like I said, there wasn't much in terms of speculation because I don't want to comment on stuff that I haven't got relatively firsthand in terms of reliable information. And do take with a grain of salt that anything I've said in terms of reliable information could also be absolute bollocks. But the politics behind all of this are what makes it very interesting. So it seems like since the death of Dietrich Mazeschitz in 2022, things behind the scenes started to somewhat fall into two camps because essentially this created somewhat of a power vacuum. Now, in Red Bull Racing itself, essentially Helmut Marko and Christian Horner were given free reign by the Red Bull boss, Dietrich Mazeschitz. And the thigh side didn't seem to care about that because it was Dietrich's baby and also it was winning and great for the company. But when Dietrich died, obviously there started to be some upheaval in terms of the underlying management of the team. So when Dietrich died, those shares, his 49%, would obviously have been passed on to his family. And it seems like the new heads of the Austrian side of Red Bull seem to want a bit more control of the Red Bull racing empire. And as far as I can tell, this all stems back to when Porsche was denied by Horner, Helmut Marko and Adrian Newey. The three of those didn't seem to want to have board control from Porsche in Germany. And it does seem very much like Red Bull themselves wanted that to go ahead because it would have been a huge deal for the team. It would have taken a lot of their investment need out of it and it would have turned it much more into a boardroom controlled company style company, which is what the new company seems to want and the thing that Dietrich kept it prized and cordoned off from. And this split Red Bull somewhat into two camps. You had the Thai side, which was very much behind Horner and the status quo because, well, let's be honest, everything was running really well. They were dominating at this time in 2023. And then there's the Austrian side who obviously weren't happy about Porsche being fobbed off when it was them who wanted Porsche there in the first place. And that would essentially lead us to a situation where you had Helmut Marko, Horner and Nui on one side with the Thai backing versus the Austrian side. So trying to figure out where Helmut Marko broke away from that team to go to Austria is one more of the interesting points. It could be down to the fact that Christian Horner backed the idea that Helmut Marko would have to apologize publicly for the xenophobic remarks around South Americans last year and Sergio Perez and laziness. But I think it has more to do with the simple idea 
that Horner probably assumed Helmut Marko would be leaving shortly after Dietrich died and Horner probably started to solidify his control of the team which he just assumed he would have after that period in this phase given he was now backed by the majority control in Thailand and perhaps Helmut Marko wasn't comfortable with that there's a lot that could have gone on inside but my best guess is it's probably more to do with Horner perhaps starting to phase Marco out given Marco is in his 80s now as far as I'm aware and I'm guessing Horner assumed he would be leaving soon anyway and wanted to completely establish his control and on top of that the Red Bull powertrains division the new engine project we know the Austrian side weren't particularly happy about either so that continuing along with the idea that it might not be as successful at the start as we had hoped was probably giving Austria more reason to get Horner out uh, than they already had and this meant that while perhaps they didn't want to initially align with Helmut Marko maybe according to the way it would have seen before that with the Porsche deal perhaps it was essentially we need to now start getting Horner away from this and grappling it ourselves and Jos more or less confirmed this division when he said that Christian Horner will likely stay till the end of the season at least because he has the full Thai backing. He didn't say the full Red Bull backing, the full Thai backing. And that would show that there was a Thai Horner side and a Helmut Marko and Austria side. But Jos also seems to be deeply embedded in this. Now, whether it's anything to do with the rumors around Jos's relationship, I don't think so because Jos seems to have been a little bit against the Horner camp for a while now. The best guess I can have is that it seems like there was a falling out after Monaco in 2022 and the Checo sliding, crashing um, in qualifying debacle and then winning. We know that Max Verstappen was annoyed about this later on in the season at Brazil. So perhaps it could go back to that. But those are the two camps and the divisions we have. There is the Yoss side with Helmut Marko that essentially controls Max Verstappen and then the Horner side with the ties who seems to somewhat still be keeping Adrian Newey on side. But that doesn't seem as strong as it was before. Perhaps that's simply because Newey doesn't really like getting involved in this stuff. We know that Newey, for example, left Williams because Heinz Harald Frentzen was picked over Damon Hill for the 1997 season without them at all talking to Nui and he was a man of his principles who essentially said I was supposed to have some sort of stay in this and Hill is a dear friend of mine and he shortly thereafter left. So we now know at the very least there is a deep division within the team and the problem with that is that at some point something has to give. So because of those divisions, we have to start asking ourselves questions around whether or not the team can survive as is. And I think the short answer to that question is likely no. At some point, Verstappen will leave. And whether that happens sooner rather than later will be an interesting one. Because Verstappen obviously is hugely, hugely popular with both sides of Red Bull. The Thai side, Horner and of course the Austrian side. But Horner, who is clearly trying to hold on to control, has essentially said that Max can be replaced. And I have to agree that he's not wrong there. Max Verstappen could be replaced. We wouldn't get anywhere near as dominant a Red Bull without Max Verstappen there. That doesn't need to be put into question at all. But if you were to slot in, say, a Norris or a Lewis Hamilton, can you imagine? a Leclerc, a Russell, a Piastri. There are a variety of drivers I think you could slot into that role, like Alonso, which would be brilliant, that would essentially be able to bring the title home. They wouldn't, again, be as dominant, but they would bring the title home. And that's all that Red Bull needs to do, is to keep winning. So Horner could keep on winning without Max Verstappen, and Helmut Marko, while his importance to the team historically can't be overstated, in the short term at least, could be done without. For the simple fact that basically the driver program is now built. And 
in reality, when you're a top team, you can get the top talent regardless. So until the cracks start to form, say in 2026 with the engine program, the team could continue feasibly without both. As long as they have a strong car, they would be fine. The real issue would be Horner keeping control with Nui. So does Nui stay at the team or leave? Because Nui leaving again in the short term for 25 for the rest of this season and perhaps, perhaps for 2026 would be okay. But the direction he sets would be really important. And the more I think about that in the second, 2026 actually you can throw out the window because Nui basically sets the high level direction sets the objectives and knows the overview of how these cars work and getting someone to fill that is no mean feat especially because they lost his prodigy dan fallows to aston martin so again everything in the short term if just horner stayed would be fine he would have the control of milton Keynes. he would have the control of the new engine project that would all be fine but i think it wouldn't be the same team in the long run Nui makes up a brilliant leader of a technical department and I think his leaving would set off a chain reaction of a group of engineers wanting to flee to other teams and new projects because one of the key draws of that team is surely working under Nui and winning. The young driver program, like I said, would clearly last in the short term, but without Helmut Marko starting to hand those reins over to someone else and training someone else into his position before he does retire which he inevitably will he is in his 80s anyway that would mean that the driver program would need to be built up again by someone new because the reins wouldn't have been handed over and my concern here is that i think that given helmut marco has been backed by oliver minslav but clearly hasn't been given fully preferential treatment because corner is still there the same with Jos Verstappen. I think that Max and Helmut could leave at the end of these regulations, at the end of 2025. Max can get his titles and then maybe see what the engine project is like. But I think that if Helmut goes now, Max has made it pretty clear he could go well. But I think essentially in the short term, we will see Horner stay there no matter what, because I think he's willing to burn the place down before leaving but i think in the long term it does mean that unless horner can get someone essentially as good as helmet marco to run the driver program which regardless of your feelings about some of the things helmet has said over the years in a clarkson controversial manner he has been incredible at doing that job so that's going to be a hard person to replace and replace Nui, who may leave again is going to be almost impossible to actually replace and get the engine project absolutely perfect. Horner's grip on that company could be tenuous at best as soon as they start leaving because the Thai side may not back it as much. But what all of this could do, regardless of how it ends up, is help Ferrari in the long run because they will likely be the first place that a lot of people fleeing the nest would call. And that could be good for Hamilton. And you can find out more about Hamilton at Ferrari here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I know this was a long one. Thanks.